we're going to study Lagrange's theorem just a little bit more. And our main question here is, is the converse of Lagrange's theorem true? Okay, we'll learn a little bit more about groups along the way as we do this. But let's look at Lagrange's theorem and then decide what it means for the converse to be true. Lagrange's theorem is a theorem about finite groups. If I have a finite group and a subgroup of that finite group, then the order of the subgroup divides the order of the group. So what would the converse of this be? Well, rather than saying, hey, let's take a subgroup and say it divides the order of G, we're not going to look at that. Instead, let's take the order of G and look for a divisor of the order of G. So if D divides the order of G, can we find a subgroup H that has order D? Let's take an example. Suppose G is of order 20, and now the order of G is 20. Okay, I'm going to call the order of G N rather than I'm going to say the order of G over and over again. So if N is 20, pick a factor of 20, let's say 5. Am I guaranteed there's a subgroup of order 5? Or am I also guaranteed there's a subgroup of order 10? Or 2? Or 4? Any divisor of 20, I want to check to see if there's a subgroup of that. Now we won't really talk about subgroups of order 1 because every group has a subgroup of order 1. And every subgroup has an, every group of order n has a subgroup of order n, namely this group itself. So I'm only looking at proper divisors and non-trivial ones as well. Non-trivial meaning, meaning d is not 1. Okay. Well, it turns out that if g is a cyclic group, then yes, we can find subgroups of every order. Okay, in fact, there's only one subgroup of every order. Um, and let's talk about how we would get th that. Um, suppose G is generated by A, and G is cyclic. Well, then the order of A is N, because G is of order N. And let's pick a divisor of N. We'll say it's a proper divisor. If you take A to the N divided by D, and look at the cyclic subgroup generated by that, it will be of order D. So let's take an example. I like 20 for some reason. So suppose G is of order 20. So A to the 20th is the identity. And pick a divisor, let's say 5. 5 divides 20. Can I find a subgroup of order 5? It's actually not too bad, to, not too hard to do. Take 20, divide it by 5, we get 4. The cyclic subgroup generated by A to the 4th will be of order 5. What powers would we have of that? We'd have a to the 4th, a to the 8th, 12th, 16th, and we'd have the identity. There are your five elements in that subgroup. So we can now eliminate any um, candidate n. I'm going to go through different values of n and see which ones might have subgroups where um, a divisor of n does not have a subgroup of that order. Okay, so I want to eliminate ones, values of n, where I know the group will be cyclic. And we know that if the group is of prime order, then it will be cyclic. Okay, and we want to restrict our attention to non-cyclic groups. So I'm going to eliminate any prime order group. So I eliminated 5, 7, 11, and so on. Now, again, why do I want to eliminate 11? Here's another reason. We want to look to see if there are any... Um, if there's a subgroup of order D where D divides 11, well, there are only two values of D that work. 1, and we do get a subgroup of order 1, and 11, the whole group will be a subgroup of order 11. Okay, So we're not going to worry about prime power, or prime numbers here. Okay, Here's another thing that we can eliminate. We can eliminate groups of order 2 times P. Because we learned that groups of order 2P are either cyclic, in which case we don't want to consider it, or isomorphic to the dihedral group, um, which consists of the symmetries of an irregular p-gon. Okay. Now, we need to show that d sub p will have groups of order 2, one of the factors, and p, another one of the factors. Well, any reflection is of order 2, so the subgroup consisting of the identity and any reflection will be, as I said, it's a subgroup of order 2. And then if we take all rotations, there are p of them, that's a subgroup of order p. Okay? So anything that's twi two times a prime, 6, 10, 14, uh, 22, we would eliminate, we're going to eliminate those from our list of contenders for n. Okay, so we're down to this list. Well, what else can I eliminate? Notice I have some prime, oops, I have some, uh, here, we'll get 
put that back. I have some squares here, 4, 9, 16, 25. I'm going to eliminate those as well. Why? Well, I don't want to worry about ones that are cyclic. Okay, so if it's, if a group of order p squared is not cyclic, there is no element of order p squared. I know that the order of any element has to be 1, p, or p squared. If there are none of p order p squared, then we're down to 1 and p for our orders. There's only one element of order 1, and that's the identity. So every other element has to have order p. Take any of those elements, look at the cyclic subgroup generated by that element, and I have a subgroup of order p. Okay, so I can eliminate 4, 9, 16, and so on. <coughs> so now my co uh, candidates are 8, 12, 18, and 20. So let's eliminate 8. turns out that any group of order 8 will have a subgroup of order 4 and 2. So here's how we go. Um, if, eight is, if it's Z8, it's cyclic of order 8, we don't worry about that. If we have an element of order 4, then I'll, um, that means that I'll have a subgroup of order 4. And if I have a subgroup of order 4, I can take um, two of those two particular elements in there and form a subgroup of order 2. So if I have a cyclic subgroup of order 4, I would have A, A squared, A cubed, and the identity. Take A squared and the identity, and there's your subgroup of order 2. So let's suppose that every element is of order 2 and see how we can form a group of order 4. Okay. The sub subgroup generated or the subgroup generated by any of these elements would be a subgroup of order 2. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Pick two elements of G of order 2, pick two distinct elements that is, and then notice that um, because um, these are of order 2, AB will also be of order 2. Now let's make sure A times B cannot be the identity because that would mean A and B are the inverses of each other, but A is its own inverse, so that can't happen. So AB cannot be the identity, and for similar reasons, A times B cannot be either of those guys because that would imply that A or B is the identity. So AB is its own inverse. We use the sock shoes principle to say, ah, AB inverse is B inverse, A inverse. But every element, remember, A and B are their own inverses, so B inverse is B, A inverse is A. So if groups of order 8 have to be commutative there in that sense, okay? Um, all right, so groups of order 8, that is, with every element of order 2. Okay, so this group of four elements is a, a subgroup of order 4, and it's a subgroup of G. All right, so now we're down to 12, and I claim that 12 is the first special one we can have to worry about. The alternating group, A4, has no subgroup of order Six. That should say subgroup there. Okay, so a quick reminder of what A sub 4 is. It consists of these 12 elements. They're groups of, it's a group of permutations. These are the even permutations um, consist, er, from S sub 4. Okay, even means that if I write them as a product of two cycles, I get um, an even number of two cycles. And we're going to show why this has no group uh, subgroup of order 6. Okay, so suppose it does have a subgroup of order 6. Okay, well, let's count some elements here. We have the identity. He's going to have to be in my subgroup. Um, I have one, two, three that are two two cycles, two, two, dis, two disjoint two cycles. So I have four elements total there. Okay, every other element is of order three. So H is going to have to consist of some elements of order 3. Okay, well, uh, it has to have some 3 cycles, say A. Then A squared will also be an H. Now note, A squared is the inverse of, or alpha. Alpha squared is the inverse of alpha. Okay, so it has to have a 2 cycle, and there's two possibilities. Either we have the identity, alpha and alpha squared, and then these four elements or these other three elements, that will be a total of six elements. Or I could do the identity, alpha and alpha squared, where alpha is a three cycle, and then beta and beta squared, where beta is a three cycle. And then they're right 
alone we've accounted for five elements. I can't do another three cycle because I'd have to have its square, that is its inverse. So the last element has to be one of these three guys, one of these um, products of two, um, two cycles where the elements are disjoint. Okay, so let's eliminate actually uh, the very first one. Okay, why is the very first one not going to work for us? Well, it turns out if we strip away alpha and alpha squared, what's left is a subgroup of H. Now remember, H is a subgroup of order 6. This is a subgroup of order 4 of H. But Lagrange's theorem says that the order of this subgroup has to divide the order of H. There are four elements there. H is of order 6. Eight, uh, 4 does not divide 6, so this is impossible. Um, it's impossible for H to have this form where you have it, uh, the identity, a 3 cycle, it's square, and then the remaining 3. So if there is one, it has to look like this. And we're going to show why that's not possible. Okay. First of all, make this little observation. If I take two, two 3 cycles in A sub 4, they have to share at least 2 elements. Okay, so let's just take an example. I have 1, 2, and 3. And then if I try to make a, two, a 3 cycle, I have to use, let's say if I try to use 4, I've still got to use 2 of the other elements that I've already used. So they have to share at least 2 elements. Okay, um, And because I'm saying that um, alpha and beta are kind of distinct from one another, so beta is not alpha squared, then we have to have um, 3 elements in alpha, and then two elements of alpha and beta, and a third element. Now you might say, well, why did you say this is the cycle ADB as opposed to ABD? Um, because it works out better for me. Uh, but the real reason um, is because if I had chosen AD, ABD, just as like uh, matches here, ABC, if beta were ABD, then beta squared is ADB, so that would still have to be in the group. So let's look at the product of these two, alpha, beta. The product of those is another three cycle, ADC. Now why is this an issue? Because ADC is not going to be in my group. Okay, Alpha and alpha squared involve A, B, and C. Beta and beta squared involve A, D, and B. This involves A, D, and C. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, that means that ADC is not in this set of elements. ADC is not the identity, and ADC is not a product of two disjoint two cycles. And so H is not closed, the set H is not closed under multiplication, and therefore it's not a subgroup.